So, if you need to get out note sheets for notes, get out note sheets for notes. So today, we're going to be talking about adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials. Now, you would have done this last year, okay? And you're going to have to kind of fight the urge of, I've already seen this, I already know how to do it, okay? It's, it's one of those things that you're going to look at it and your brain's going to go, oh yeah, I've already seen this, and it's easy. It is to a degree, but it's like anything, you have to be... You have to be very, very careful and particular, especially with the signage. That's what always throws people off on this stuff is the signs because your hand starts moving faster than your brain and you get into trouble. Okay. So up first, we're just going to look at vertical addition of polynomials. So have you all done a vertical addition like this, right? You have. It's just remember how we used to teach you addition back in like second grade, right, where you'd have like three numbers plus three numbers and you'd set it up like this? We're using the exact same process. The only thing that I'm going to add is remember when we were doing synthetic substitution the other day? I told you make sure that you have every power represented, right? You want to use placeholders when you set these equations up because what's important here is that we have an x cubed over the x cubed. We have an x squared over an x squared, an x over an x, and a constant over a constant. Okay, you have to match things up vertically so the powers match so it's kind of like creating like terms all right everybody good with that yes no maybe so feel free to use the zero as a placeholder they guarantee our accuracy and then we just move one term at a time one term type so we still start at the right and work our way left just like we do when we do regular addition so what's negative nine plus eleven negative 2, what's 3x plus 0x? 3x plus or minus, though? Plus. So if you notice, it's just like our regular addition techniques, but there's two differences. One, we don't carry over, okay? If it's bigger than 10, we don't move the 1 over. It's just whatever the number is goes down. And then the other thing that we have to worry about is the signage, okay? So what's negative 5x squared plus 6x squared? 1x squared plus or minus? Positive 1x squared, and then 2x cubed plus an x cubed, 3x cubed. So this is our final answer, all right? So you, you also have to remember that when you add or subtract, do we ever change powers? No. Addition and subtraction never touches powers. If you think about your power rules, they always dealt with when you have two bases multiplied together or divided, okay? So when you're adding or subtracting, you're just grouping your like terms, just like we did in Algebra 1 and just like we started with in uh, Chapter 1 at the beginning of the year. Okay? Any major questions on the vertical addition? Okay, so I don't know if you've seen it this way. You're welcome to use it if you want. But this is the style that you're more used to seeing, right? So if I asked you to add this up, what do we have to do? Like, what do we start with? A lot of times uh, we forget that when we're simplifying, we're just getting rid of parentheses and then grouping up our like terms. So what's the number in front of this set of parentheses right here? A positive one. What about in front of this set of parentheses? A positive one. So our order of operations says do whatever's inside the parentheses first. Is there anything I can do to group up in this first set of parentheses and make things more simplistic? No. What about the second set? No. Now, parentheses, we are actually don't like when we're simplifying. They're like prisons. They lock everything down. So anything in a set of parentheses, we can't touch. So part of your simplification process is just to remove parentheses. So to do that, the big tool that we use a lot to break parentheses is the distributive property. So distribute your one into each piece, and then the positive one into each piece here. Okay, and so what's 1 times 3y cubed? 3y cubed, okay. So does multiplication by 1 change anything? No, sorry, let me rephrase. Does multiplication by a positive 1 change anything? No. So you distribute, whoops, and what's a positive 1 times a negative 4y squared? Negative 4y squared. And you get that, right? So any questions on how I got rid of the parentheses using the distributive property when it's addition, yes or no? So what's the biggest power you see? Three. So we have a 
Okay, Y cubed. Do I have anything else up here that's Y cubed? No. Okay. What is my next power? The Y squared. Do I have anything else up here that's Y squared? Okay, negative 4Y squared. Uh, what's next? Negative 7Y, positive 2Y, and then the last piece all by its lonesome, negative 5. So we're just going to group up by power. Now, if you notice, which power did I start with, the biggest power or the smallest power? The biggest. So when you're done, your answer is actually going to be in standard form. So you can determine end behavior and what the graph is going to look like and all of that, like we were doing last section, right after you're done with the addition, subtraction, or multiplication. Okay? So group up your like stuff. How many things do we have that end in a three? Or sorry, end with a power of three? Just one. So it comes down untouched. And I'm going to cross it off. Okay? The reason for that is I get the joys of using multiple colors so I can see things jumping out. You don't get that. Everything you write with is going to look exactly the same. This is only six pieces. Some of your multiplications, you're going to have 15 or 16 pieces running around. So it's really easy for your eyes to start jumping. So after you use a power, if you cross them off, it'll help your brain see what's left and then what still needs to be done. Okay? So that's the Y cubed. So group your Y squareds. We've got negative 2 Y squared. Take away 4 Y squared. And what's that? Negative 6y squared. And then now that we're done with it, we cross it off. Group your y's. And we get negative 5y. And then the only constant that's out there is negative 5. So we put that on the end. And you can see that the answer is in our standard form. Okay? So now it's just like what we're doing with 5.2. So hopefully you can look up here and go, oh, that's a cubic. Right? A is positive, so it's going to be up in the first, down in the third. So you already are able to create the basic shape that quickly, okay? Any major questions on the addition side, whether it's vertical or horizontal? Yes, no, maybe so. So vertical subtraction. Now, how do you subtract these? What, what, what is your brain thinking? Like if I just gave this to you and said, do this, how would you start? Okay, distribute what, the what? Okay, so if I turn this into a negative 1, what does this become outside? Like, how do you turn subtraction into something else? Close, not minus a negative 1, but subtraction becomes plus a negative, right? So we're turning this into plus a negative. And what we'll do is exactly what Sarah Jo said, which is distribute this negative 1 into everything on the bottom. And then just rewrite, as a, rewrite it as an addition problem. Okay. 8x cubed minus x squared minus 5x plus 1, and then plus sign. So when we distribute the negative, does multiplication by 1 change the numbers? No. So multiplying in the negative 1 just changes the what's? The signs. And then this is just like what we did on the previous slide, right? So you just add down and group by term. So what is 1 minus 7? Negative 6. Negative 5x plus an x. Negative 4x, and very good on the signs. Keep that up. Negative x squared minus 2x squared. Negative 3x squared, and then 8x cubed minus 3x cubed. 5x cubed, very good. And this is your final answer, and again, we're finished. Okay? Any major questions on the subtraction side? Now, do you have to do this problem with the distribution? Do you think that's the only way of doing it, or no? No, you can actually just work through the subtraction but it gets really hairy in a hurry because of the opportunity for double negatives. Yes? So if I just gave it to you like this, could we just subtract like we normally do? Like uh, if I gave you 132 minus uh, 54, how would you subtract that? Do you turn it into plus a negative and all that? What would you do? 2 minus 4, right? Can we take 4 away from 2? No, so we take this and turn it into a 2 and borrow and get 8, right? Well, you can actually do this the same way if you want to. You just have to be really careful with the signage. So, like, what's 1 minus 7? Just in general, what's 1 minus 7? Negative 6. Okay, so if we have negative 5x and we subtract a negative, what happens to the double negative? 
positive, what's negative 5x plus an x, negative 4x. Are we getting anything different than what I had over here? No. So why do we show you this? It's easier for most, but the main thing is that this double negative combination we always have a hard time with because it's not explicitly shown. So the opportunity for mistakes is higher when you just try to do it all in your head, whereas this method, you can just multiply it out. It's math that you've been doing for the last couple of years, and the opportunity for failure is actually less, okay? And again, do you really think I care which method you use? No. No. What do, you, what do I want? The right answer without breaking math laws that you can duplicate, right? So it's all about duplicated accuracy, okay? So whatever fits your brain the best, that's what you use. So that's vertical. We're going to do the same thing with horizontal, except there's a typo. Un momento. There we go. That looks a little bit better. And this is exactly what we did on the other problem, right? What's the number in front of the parentheses here? Positive one. What about here? Negative one. So we're going to do exactly what we just did on the horizontal, but vertically, right? So we're going to distribute, group up our like terms, and we'll be done. So we're going to distribute here and get 3y cubed minus 2y squared minus 7y plus 4y squared minus 2y plus 5. So any questions on that expansion, on what's going on, how I got the stuff I got? Okay, so since you guys are really quiet, hopefully you got it all or you're just copying. The number one mistake in this section is that when you all see the negative, you go negative 1 times negative 4y squared and get positive 4y squared. But then you stop distributing the negative. Is the 4y squared the only piece in parentheses? No, there's three terms here, which means that every one of those terms has to get multiplied by the negative. Okay? So you have to be really careful. We're not just dropping parentheses. We're actually distributing a 1 through the alter signs and get rid of them. So you have to be careful here. Your brain, because of the addition side, it looks like we just dropped the parentheses. With the negative side, and even with the addition side, we don't just drop the parentheses. We're distributing the sign to get rid of the parentheses. So if you just drop these, uh, the last set of parentheses here, you will only change the one sign instead of all of them. And that's the number one issue when it comes to this section. Okay, so just be careful. Group up your like terms. What's the biggest power? The cubed. So we only have one piece that's cubed. So it goes down. What's the next power after cubed? Squared, right? Do I have anything being squared? Yeah, I have negative 2y squared and I have 4y squared. So what do I do with those? Add them, combine them, right? And so what's negative 2y squared plus 4y squared? Positive 2y squared. We're done with those. After y squared is just y. So do I have anything with just a y? All right, combine those, and I get... And then the last piece is the plus 5, all by is multiple. And there you go. Again, completely worked out in standard form, right? So when you're done with these, if you're doing them right, every addition problem... Every subtraction problem, every multiplication problem, your answer should be in standard form, from biggest power to smallest power. Okay? Everybody all right? Any questions on addition or subtraction? All right, so multiplication. Have you ever seen vertical multiplication like this? Okay, I don't know if you saw it last year or not. It works just like our regular vertical multiplication. So, again, if I had... Let me see if I set this up right or if I have to. Yep, okay. Give me a three-digit number. 102, okay. And I multiplied it by, pick a two-digit number. 24, all right. If I told you to multiply this, walk me through it. What do you do? Two and four and get eight, right? And then we go four times what? Okay, and then four times. And then what do we put here? A zero, right, as a placeholder, so that way... The 4, which we already used, is blocked off, and we go to the tenths place. And then we multiply, and then what do we do with these? We add down, right? We use the exact same process when we multiply polynomials. The only thing that's changed is over here, I have 1s, 10s, 100s, right? Over here, what is causing my subdivisions? the plus and minus signs, right? So it's the terms. So I have a constant, I have a linear, and I have a quadratic. Everybody okay with that? So the powers are what's creating the separation. Instead of it being 
the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. It's the constant. It's the y. It's the y squared. It's the y cubed. All right, well, we go through the process the exact same way. So where did we start here? Four times two. So where am I going to start here? Negative two times negative six. So what is negative two times negative six? Twelve. Pos uh, positive or negative? Okay, so I get a plus twelve. Right? And then I did four times zero to get to zero. So here I do the negative two times three y, and what do I get? Negative six y. And then negative two times what? Negative two y squared. So what's negative two times negative two? Positive four y squared. Okay, everybody okay with the first set, right? But I already used the negative two term, right? So what do I have to put here as a placeholder? And then we just repeat what we did. So now I'm taking y. So what's y times negative six? Okay, y times three y. Not cubed, but just squared, right? So remember, when we multiply same bases, what do we do with the powers? Yeah, we add them, right? So a y times a y is a y squared because 1 plus 1 is 2. Perfect. <laughs> when you multiply two items together that are polynomials, right? You multiply. I'm trying to get your attention back up here. All right. For Emily's sake, because I... If she turns any more red, I'm going to get scared. So <laughs> you multiply the whole numbers together. So what's negative 2 times 1? Negative 2. And then when you multiply the same bases, you add the powers. Okay, so we get negative 2y, and then 2 plus 1 is 3. And if you notice, we need the 0 here so that way everything stays lined up, right? If you notice in my answer, I have a constant over a constant, a y over a y, a y squared over y squared. Everybody all right with that? If you don't put in the zero, you'll still get the right answer, but everything will be off. So your brain's going to try to add stuff that can be combined, and you're going to get confused. Okay? So now I'll just add down. So what's 12 plus zero? 12. Negative 6y, take away 6y. Negative 12y. 4y squared plus 3y squared. Plus 7y squared, and then negative 2y cubed by itself. Again... Notice, the answer is entirely in standard form. Woo, you good? It just looks weird, all right? It, it looks a little bit different. That's all right. It, it's odd. You've never seen it before. Okay, so it's an, it's an expansion on the idea from here, but instead of it being just numbers, it's, right, it's the actual uh, terms within the polynomial, Okay. Now, this is what you spent a lot of your, maybe. <laughs> Anybody else see that, right? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure I'm not going crazy yet. Um, so this is what you spent a lot of your life doing, right? Okay. So this is the expansion on the uh, distributive property. It's going to be similar to FOIL, right? So what's the first term on the left-hand side of parentheses? One, yeah, oh, the, in the left hand, no, 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 sorry. What's the first term on the left hand side of parentheses? So the set of parentheses on the left, what's the first term? X. So that's going to get distributed into how many terms on the right? All three of them. Everybody all right with that? Yes or no? What's the second term in the first set of parentheses? C. And that gets distributed into everything across. So how many terms in the first set? So. How many terms in the second set? So how many terms should we have total at the end of our multiplication? Five. Six. You multiply the number of terms together. So two times three means we should have six on our expansion. Why can that be useful? To help you make sure that you didn't miss one, right? Because if I give you five times five, and you're like, oh, uh, that's a lot of pieces running around, right? You just count after you expand and make sure you have 25 items. And then you start combining from there. Everybody okay? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. All right. So walk me through the multiplication. So what is x times 3x squared? Okay. And then we keep running, right? Everybody okay? 
All right, so I'm just going to work for a minute here. Check and see if you get the same thing, if you have questions. Hello. And there you go. All right. Any questions, any oh my gosh moments, anything that makes your brain scream? Yeah. Yeah, the vertical is just a different approach. It's not something that we use that often as an explicit property, but sometimes it's easier if you have smaller items. If you have really big polynomials, um, some people prefer the vertical because you can follow it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the horizontal approach. The only issue that I have with um, you guys using the horizontal approach is I've seen this recently and it's a little confusing. You are so used to pre-numbering your paper and you assume that the problem is only going to take up two lines, right? And so you write the problem down so you don't have to take home your book and then you try to write it this way, okay? That creates some flow issues because your brain can't really follow too well from left to right because it thinks it's one big statement. So what we prefer is work horizontally, but you stack your lines in a vertical style. So you're going to use horizontal multiplication, but your answer should go directly below the other set of parentheses. That's the only style knock that I have. And it usually doesn't get too bad until we have equal signs because then I have a really hard time reading your work. Okay? So if you could get into the habit of stacking them vertically, even though you're working horizontal, it would be good. All right, so group up your like terms. Do we have any terms that are alike up here? Okay, which terms? Okay, negative 2x squared and 9x squared. We good? You sure? Because you're kind of talking over Nick while he's trying to actually answer the question. So just making sure. All right, so we've got the x squareds going together, and we've got the x's going together. Anything else I can combine? So we've got the x squareds, and we've got the x's, right? Okay. So and then, again, we just work biggest to smallest, so our answer will always be in standard form. So 3x cubed plus 7x, right? Right, because the 9's bigger. Plus 12. Perfect. All right. So any gigantic questions? Now, again, this is all stuff you've done, right? The vertical versus horizontal approach, again, it's an individual style thing. I personally don't have a preference for you to use. Okay? The only preference is whatever makes the most sense to you. Yes, sir? Yeah, there's an entire, well, technically there's an entire chapter devoted to it. That's what chapter 8 is. Um, huh? Yeah, it's the very first chapter we do. But we're going to start it this year. We're going to give you an introduction to it. But um, if I remember right, I think there might be one section on it. But when you wind up with an X in the denominator, it creates an entire branch of mathematics where we deal with hyperbolic functions. Yeah, chapter 8 is nothing but fractions. It's okay. If you, if you fight the, huh, 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 it's a fraction feeling, I'll get you through whatever you need, okay? Trust me. But we just got to get past the initial fight or flight, okay? But with the hyperbolic functions, they're no longer parabolas, or sorry, they're not parabolas and they're not polynomials, but we'll spend a lot of time to have vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and they're a specific type of mathematics. So getting an X in the denominator always creates issues for us because it creates things that cannot exist. So we have a branch of math to handle it. Okay. So as far as this goes, this is a list of special product patterns. Now, this is kind of like mathematical shortcuts, things that you can do to speed up your calculations. Well, it's on page 347. So there is a section of your homework that says using special product patterns. Do you have to use these? Absolutely not. All of these problems can be done by hand, just like we have been, okay? But these are slightly faster approaches if you know them. So this entire chart is on page 347. So if you don't want to copy this down in its entirety, leave a note in your notes that says special product patterns on page 347. 
this entire chart is there. So when you get to that section of your homework, and you're like, I can't believe they're asking us to work out a cubic binomial or a binomial cubed. Ugh. Leave a note for yourself to go back and look up the pattern. Okay, so I do want to run run through one of these. So, whoa, hey, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Are we all right over there? Nope. All right. Well, then there you go. So if I gave you x plus 7 times x minus 7, you could FOIL that out, right? And you get x squared minus 7, x plus 7, x minus 49, and group up your like terms and all that. Or if you recognize that we have the exact same values with opposite signs, we can just use this property. So what the property says is that a plus b quantity times a minus b quantity is equal to a squared minus b squared. So in this setup, what do I have as my a? x, and what is my b? 7. So all I do is plug the a and the b into the formula. So what is my x squared? So what is x squared, I should say? x squared, right? Minus what's 7 squared? 49. And you're done. Come on. Really? Thank you. All right. <laughs> I knew it was you controlling my board all along. And I'd have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for you middling kids. All right. Sorry. Yeah, I figured a little Scooby-Doo didn't hurt, right? So, what? <laughs> no, no. I, yeah. that, that, there's an inside joke for my year two kids. Um, so, anyway, uh, we get x squared minus 49. So, did I actually FOIL anything out? No, but did I get to the exact same answer? Yes, that's what these formulas are for. So, again, it's only if you want to use them. They're there for you to reference.